Good afternoon. There once was a time that the very thought of seeing a black man with his arms around a white woman was absolutely unthinkable. Today, it's still unthinkable because most fair-minded people don't give it a second thought. Screenwriters in 2005, a romantic film, Broke Back Mountain, kicked open a door with Bean following right behind with the little dog laughed in 2006. As Dylan sang, the times they are changing. And a lot of it comes down to the agent wanting to keep the movie star in the closet so he doesn't ruin his career by doing this. So she's continuously trying to not let this get out. And this male prostitute that comes along, um, Alex, played by uh, amazingly well by uh, Derek Woodruff, um, they form a connection and kind of a bond. And they really want to pursue this and um, it just puts Diane on edge and she doesn't want this to happen so um, and then Alex is complicated by his live-in sometimes girlfriend Ellen played by Allison Lee and it, she just they kind of start having a relationship and then he gets involved with Mitchell and it's a whole big kind of odd love triangle that happens with the show so so who's your agent Leslie Ty uh, she plays Diane Diane. And Diane is very ambitious and um, very motivated agent. And she and Mitchell have been together for a long time. Seven years. Seven years. And um, they have been really working to make him like the next huge star. He's he's getting some awards, he's getting some, you know, some good roles, but he's not quite he doesn't have any franchises. He doesn't have any parts where you know he's playing Batman or something like that. He doesn't have that yet. And so she's really working hard. She really is banking on him as being her like Tom Cruise, like her big star. So she that's why she's so driven to make sure that you know she doesn't care. So he, she protects him. She's try, she is just trying to protect him and like make sure that he gets to where he wants to be. And she doesn't care necessarily whether he has a you know. It's a rent boy, but she wants him to keep it quiet. Her in case of homosexuality <laughs> informs me that as his date, are you possibly suited for this? As his date to this award ceremony, he would like to bring his mother <laughs> so that no one will know that he's gay. I'm Tyson. I'm You're Blake Mitchell. Right. And uh, we, uh, we come to New York from L.A. because that's what... Actor types do. You're getting an award. Yeah. yeah, your character gets an award. You can come to get an award, come to buy a play, and uh, she has been all about trying to find these ways to get him, get him out there to make sure that the uh, that the good people want him in their movies, that the people lust after him, that they that there is the love from the American public, and she is. As she said before, very concerned that that's not going to happen if he is an outed homosexual. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he, uh, he knows that that's probably the best thing for him as well if he decides that he wants to uh, continue with this whole life of fame and fortune. So he tries to keep it on the back burner as best he can, but I think love has a way of uh, getting away from you. And every now and then, you make a connection that you don't really anticipate. And that's kind of what you get to see in the show, is you get to see this, this kind of this, this connection between two people that aren't 100% certain how they feel about it. Someone who wants to stay in the closet because he doesn't want people to know he's gay, and a character that might not necessarily be cons too concerned in the gigolo. You know, he's not too concerned about necessarily what someone's going to think of him personally, but he has his own life that he needs to be worried about and getting too attached, especially to a client. <laughs> Scotch and loneliness and independence and do you see where I'm going with this? Oh, so if you could just oh, I see. Uh, you can take something from the cart if you're hungry. No, actually, I'm not hungry at all. What brought you to um, direct the show? 
I'd actually seen it um, God, five years ago now or so. Um, the, it was done by the Performance Network down in Ann Arbor. And I had heard a little bit about it. Um, I'm a big enough of a theater nerd that I almost always watch the Tonys. And um, the gallop play Diane won a Tony Award that year. Um, and I just remember hearing about the show, and then I saw the clips, especially of uh, Diane's stuff, and I just fell in love with it. So when I got an opportunity to go see it with my old college roommate, we, we went down, and I didn't really know what I was getting into. I, I wasn't sure what this show was about. Um, At what stage in the, in the process uh, did you feel that way? Right from the very beginning? Or right from the beginning. Oh, yeah. It was one of those... I'd seen snippets here and there, but never really had the full picture. Didn't know too much about the story. Knew enough to know that I liked it, um, because uh, Douglas Carter Bean also wrote a movie that I love, which is Two Home Foods for Everything Julie Newmar. Um, so I was like, okay, I already like his writing, so let's see what his play is like. And so I sat in the theater, and I watched this show, and I just, curtain call came, I stood, I clapped, I cheered, I, I was crying, it was I was just, I, I was laughing, I didn't know what to make of myself, and then I sat back down, and I stayed there for 10 minutes until the ushers kicked me out, because I had to process, and it was this huge process for me to sit there and walk after the show, and just try to come to terms with what I'd seen, and what I'd experienced as, a, as an audience member, and I just knew that if this show ever became available at the Playhouse, that I'd want to put it to direct it, because I just loved it so much. Do you want to be my uncle or not? Is there paperwork? <laughs> no. Then I'll be your uncle. Because if you don't want a scene, then... I have no idea what is going on here. Playing a gay character and playing a gay character in a situation like this where it, it's very... It's very out there. It's very showing to the audience. This is this is not something I say I'm gay. This is something that I show that I'm gay. So it actually is my first, first time doing anything like that. Right. And uh, they asked me when I was reading, like, are you, are you comfortable being in a homosexual relationship on stage? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I read it, I'm like, wow, this is really intense, but this is going to be really good. This is going to be very interesting to see how the audiences are going to uh, embrace this play. It because is. especially with these being real relationships, just not the silly stuff that they show in mm -hmm. a lot of uh, sitcoms and whatnot, but this this could be very uh, kind of uh, with for some people. It could switch some people. Yeah. It could. It but could. you know what? That's a good thing for them. That's good. That's good for them to be uh, uh, a little uncomfortable. Sometimes that's stuff. what theater needs to that's be. That's what theater's about. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't, uh, through through the rehearsal process, my goal was never to try and be a people pleaser with the show. I, I'm well aware there's plenty of people that come to the Old Town Players and love everything we do, and I'm well aware some of those people could come to this and hate it. This, this is one of those and shows that, that, I don't know who's originally said this quote, but it's a type of show that's supposed to Comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. Something for no money. Something for little or no visibility. And now all of Hollywood wants his meeting his play. Of course it's about two men in love. They're going to want to change that. Rewrite it. Congratulations! Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's been a very pleasant experience. There were, uh, I'm glad we got, it. she did a good job of easing us into it, you know, you know, first time you do everything with your clothes on and then you hang out with your clothes off. So it, she did a good job of easing it into us, easing it into, easing us into it. And there we go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, Get that out of the <laughs> And uh, she, she did a really job I'll of... I'll edit of, that out. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and no, she did a great job of kind of working us into it, and she was, she was very aware of people's comfort levels, and I think that that was really critical and a very something to be applauded, because that's not easy to do. Your actors, mm -hmm. their, their comfort level. Yes. And actually, usually, they were more comfortable with things than I was. <laughs> like, there were moments where I was like, you, you don't, it's fine. If you guys don't want to do the kiss right now, it's fine. We're just blocking, and you don't need, and they were both like, oh, screw it. They just, I was like, okay, well. We got this. It's okay. It's going to happen at some point. Let's go. I'm fine with that, I suppose. And so it was always, because I was trying to tread very carefully, so I wasn't overstepping bounds, trying to let them establish relationships. Because Tyson and Derek had never met before this show. So it was like, there are two strangers, and then it's like, I want you to make out. Is this a receipt? No. <laughs> my number. Myself. You shouldn't be calling up red boys when you're not sober. You can get fucking old. Dude. What would you like to see the audiences that come to see this play walk away 
Thank you for your time. I want them to walk away and think about what it means to be a mom and what they're willing to have and to not have for that love and for that standard of beauty. What is that to them? Um, and I hope they, they laugh, they leave chuckling about funny moments, and I hope they leave deeply thinking about those serious poignant moments. And I hope they just have a lot of fun, because it's a fun show. Now, when you were both um, cast for the show at the auditions, did you ever think that you were going to be in bed with your director? Yeah. Yeah. That never occurred in my mind. I knew for sure it was going to happen at some point. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> well, I can't wait to see the show. It's opening when? We open this Friday, February 1st. Curtains at 7.30. And goes until when? We go until February 16th. Fantastic. Thank you, Etsy. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Thank you Mitchell. <laughs> you are so in character. I just know you by Mitchell. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a memory of our Tyson. Tyson. <laughs>